that the gift of God is eternal life. You gotta repent of all your sins. And out of verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I want to talk to you today about God's greatest gift, which is the name Jesus. God's greatest gift, the saving name of Jesus. In this text, you have to go all the way back to the third chapter to get the continue, the whole story of what Peter is talking about. God had worked a miracle in the life of an impotent, lame man that could not walk but had to be carried if he was to go anywhere. And God used Peter to pray for this man and to call the name of Jesus Christ over him. And God healed him right there at the door of the church. This man, as you read in the third chapter, was uh, lame from his mother's womb. He had never walked, never walked. And, of course, he, he had no means of income. His occupation and his job that he was resigned to do was to go to the church house sit at the door and beg. This was the only way that he could eat. You can read about it in the third chapter as we give you a summary of this story. He was there. He had been there oftentimes looking for somebody to have mercy on him. Lame from his mother's womb. But there came a day that this day was special. This day was not like any other day. Give me say amen. Because it might have started out as any other day. It no doubt started out the same by him being picked up and carried and put at the gate of the temple, the gate of the temple that was called beautiful. But there was nothing beautiful about this man's life. Being there at that gate that he knew that was called beautiful, but he did not have a beautiful life. He never walked, watched others walk, watched other kids run and jump, have a good time. But he was restricted from that. Born lame. There's a whole lot of folk in this world that look on the prosperity, prosperity and well-off of others and they themselves having a difficult time. Those are the times that we are living in today. And many times, me being a pastor, being in the ministry for 36 years, I've seen a lot of changes over the three plus decades of dealing with people and dealing with society and, 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 and in church. We are in a time where people are so broken and so devastated that they feel that there is no hope. And they feel that there is such a lack of hope that they don't even take out the time to really call on God or really to seek after God as they ought to. Some do make an attempt to try to reach out to God. They go from one church to another. And then if you have experience like I have, amen, you get hurt in church. Can we say amen? Used to be a time where it was a rarity for someone to be hurt in church. But I can dare say here today that probably all of us have been hurt in church at one time or another. And so many people are in despair. 
Many people are despondent. They are broken in their spirit. Many people don't have hope. And this is usually comes with the culmination of a person taking their own life. I heard of a story of a young lady that took the life of another young lady down in the southern parts of the United States. She was 21 years old, and she had took the life of another 21-year-old girl all over a man, and that's something I cannot understand why a girl would take her life over a man or take someone else's life over a man. Nobody is worth killing anybody over anything. Can we say amen? And so she killed this other young lady, beautiful young ladies, looked like they could be sisters. Killed the, took the life of another young lady over a man, and then they found out that the woman, the 21-year-old who died, was pregnant. And so that the girl, the young girl, is being charged with double murder, where in a state where they have the death penalty. Most certainly, that's probably what she's going to get unless God have mercy on her. People are messing up their lives. The devil is getting involved in people's lives, and people are messing up their lives at an early age. I used to didn't hear about these type of things uh, back in my day. I remember there was a young lady by the name of Diane Powell that I went to high school with. She wasn't a very attractive-looking girl, but the way she carried herself, the way she dressed and the way she kept her hair made her very attractive. And I remember witnessing to her on a Friday in high school, saying, Diane, you need to come to church with me and get saved. God can save you. He could change your life. You see, Diane had a boyfriend that lived in Albion, and I knew the guy. Um, and the guy was no good. And some people say, I saw an article where it says that why do good girls attracted to bad guys? And my answer is because the girls are not good at all. Can we say amen? They're not good at all. However, I witnessed to her on that Friday, told her about Jesus. She would look depressed in the class. And, and I want to share with her and tell her what Jesus can do. Talk to Diane. Praise the Lord. And, 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 of course, she said, well, I'm not going to come to church with you on Sunday, but I will think about it over the weekend, get back with you on Monday. And so Monday came, we sat, I believe it was the history class. The teacher was Mr. Tramp. And she came to me and she said, you know, Raider, I decide I don't want to be saved right now. I'm not ready. It seemed to be a common misconception that people have. When you extend to them an opportunity for salvation, they say they're not ready. That's, well, of course you're not ready. You can never get ready to get saved. If you could get ready, you would need to be saved because you're already ready. You come to Jesus so that he can get you ready. You can't get yourself ready. <laughs> Let me say amen. Let me fix all my problems. You can't fix your problems. Jesus is the only one that can fix it. Praise the Lord. But that's what she said. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that over 36 years of preaching the word of God. Well, let me get this together. Let me get that together. Let me do this. Let me do that. You don't need to do nothing but come to Jesus as you are. Let me say amen. Amen. Let him fix it for you. Amen. Why are you going to uh, have a car that's broke down? Praise the Lord. And you're going to talk about, I'm going to go out there and fix it when you don't have no uh, uh, mechanical education in automotive repair. Can we say amen? <laughs> you, don't, you don't know nothing about uh, 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 putting in a transmission. You don't know nothing about putting in an engine. You don't know nothing about the fan wheel. You don't know about the serpentine belt. Can church say amen? Some of you might know something about it, praise the Lord. But sometimes your car can be broke down and you don't know what to do about it. Why don't you take it to the repair shop? Well, I'm a, let me get it together first and then I'll take it on over. If you got it together, you wouldn't need to take it over there. People do God the same way. Now, we have enough sense not to do that with our vehicles. Can we say amen? Car break down, you take it to the repair shop. They got all the tools. They got all the equipment. Lift the car up on the hoist. Look up underneath the car. Am I telling the truth? They got all of the tools, specializes 
and, and fix it and they can go in and diagnose what's wrong with it and fix it. You don't say, well, let me, let, let, me, let me fix this in the car, then I'll take it in and get it fixed. Well, that's the same kind of false mentality that people have when you're talking about coming to Jesus. See, that's just an excuse. Give me say amen. That's all that is. That's just an excuse. What if Jesus made a bunch of excuses uh, in going to the cross for us and dying for our sins? What if God made a bunch of excuses? Well, I would wake you up in the morning, but you know what? I had a really bad night. Can we say amen? What if God wants to make excuses when we are in need? Praise the Lord. And we need him to do something for us. I don't want God to be making excuses when it comes to helping me. When I need some help, I want God to step in right now and do something about it. Can the church say amen? Amen. This man was laying by this beautiful gate. He was laying. Praise God. And his day started out just like any other day. Praise God. Friends came over, gave him a lift to the church. Praise God. And carried him and set him down. And he saw, no doubt, the same people coming, doing the same thing. But little did that man know, that lame man know, that this day was going to be a different day. This day, God was going to get involved in his life. This day, a change was going to take place. This day, amen, will be the first day of the rest of his life. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, amen, you might have got up just like any other day and, and got in your car and drove just like any other day, but today is something special for you. It can be special for you today. Let me say amen. Amen. You don't have to, amen, leave church like you have in time past on other churches. Amen. The same way that you came. Amen. Jesus is here. Amen. To heal you and deliver you from the lameness of your life. Here to fix it for you. If you let him fix it. Let the church say amen. Amen. It is, it, it, it is preposterous. For us to know that our lives are not what they ought to be. Amen. And have an opportunity to come to the life fixer. Amen. And, and, and refuse to come before him. What is it about your life that you need to hang on to that forbids you from giving your life to Jesus? Can the church say amen? What is it? What is so great? What is so grand? What is so wonderful? Amen. About how you are living that you don't need to give your life to Jesus today. Your soul, you know deep down within your spirit that you need God and that you need God right now. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. You know deep down in your soul, amen, that you are not steering the course of life, amen, on the track that it ought to be on. Amen. You ought to give your life to Jesus and let him steer and direct your life. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. And God can fix whatever situation you find yourself in. I'm not talking about what somebody told me. I'm a witness for myself. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Praise God. So, amen. This day can be the first day of the rest of your life. This day can be something special to you. You're already in a church like no other church you've ever been in. Can the church say amen? Amen. God is in this church. Amen. God is here. He's not here because I'm here or I'm the pastor. He's here because this is his house. And if you knew the story of how many times the devil tried to close these doors and the devil tried to shut us down, amen, you'd have to admit and confess like I'm confessing that this is God's house, that God dwells here, that God works here, that God saves here, that God delivers here in this house. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh, yes. Uh, amen. Your day doesn't have to be. You don't have to walk out with your head hung down. You can walk out with your head held high. You can walk out with a smile uh, on your face. You can walk out with Jesus on the inside. You be singing the song uh, like the songwriter said. What a wonderful change uh, in my life has been wrought since Jesus has come into my heart. Uh, Amen. You see, this is a Jesus only church. We're not preaching no preacher. We're not preaching some man. We're not preaching some woman. It's all about the Lord Jesus uh, and what he can do for you. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Uh, come on and say hallelujah. Uh, 
Amen. Praise God. So that man uh, lying there at the gate. And you know, folk uh, come to church for various reasons. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. People come to church for all kind of reasons. Uh, and you need to ask yourself this question. Uh, why did you come to church today? Uh, did you come for what you can get? Or did you come uh, for what God can give you? Uh, what you can get from God? Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Uh, some folk come to church because uh, they heard that uh, the church girls, the church women are good women. Uh, and I'm trying to find me a good woman. Uh, amen. Can, uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, some folk come to church because they say, well, uh, I need a man. I need a good man. Uh, and I heard that, amen, good men are in church. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. That is true. Uh, the best women uh, are women that are walking with God. Uh, and the best men uh, are men that are walking with God. Uh, but church is much more than that. Uh, amen. You need to come in and get the one uh, who is building the church. Uh, get the one, uh, amen, that sits high in the heavens. Uh, amen. Sits upon the circle of the earth. Uh, you need to get the one that has the key uh, to your blessing. Uh, get the one that is able uh, to pick you up and turn you around. Uh, Get the one that's able to uh, set your feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Uh, praise God. And so, uh, amen, this man uh, there at church. And praise God, uh, Peter and John, uh, the Bible says at the hour of prayer, uh, which was the ninth hour, uh, they got up early in the morning. Uh, come to the house of God and pray uh, in the church. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I'm here to tell you. God can use you uh, if you get up early sometime uh, and come down to the house of prayer. Uh, I heard David say in Psalms 55, uh, he said, morning, morning and evening uh, and at noon uh, will I cry aloud unto you. Uh, uh, you know, oh Lord, uh, have you ever come down to the house of prayer and cried out to Jesus uh, about your trouble? Uh, amen. Have you ever uh, took out the time to weep uh, and tell the Lord all about it. Huh? Can I get a witness in here? Huh? Amen. I guarantee you, you take out time uh, to call on God uh, in his house and huh? the church. Uh, hallelujah. Huh? It is impossible uh, for one to call on Jesus in his house uh, and Jesus not answer. Huh? Can I get a witness in here? Huh? Even in your house, huh? if somebody called you in your house, huh? you say what? Huh? Amen. We're like that. Huh? And the church say amen. Huh? But all, uh, if you get in God's house, uh, amen, the place where we sing praises uh, unto him uh, and say, Jesus, uh, I need some help. Uh, Jesus, uh, I need salvation. Uh, if you call on him, uh, he'll answer. Uh, and the church clap in and shout hallelujah. Oh, yes. Uh, come on and say hallelujah. Uh, amen. Praise God. Uh, that's why I love the Lord. Uh, I ain't got to fake and hypocrite, huh? Amen. Because Jesus huh, is real in my soul. Huh? In the church, huh? hallelujah. Huh? Amen. Sometimes huh? I can feel him all in my hands. Huh? Sometimes I can feel him huh? all over me. Huh? I don't care about what some atheist said. Huh? Amen. He don't know what he's talking about. Huh? Because if he walked in my shoes, huh? he'd find out that he's alpha huh? and omega. Huh? If he walked in my shoes, uh, he'd find out he's the beginning and the end. Uh, if he walked in my shoes, uh, he'd find out that he's a deliverer. Uh, come on, clap your hand and say, yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, church, church uh, hallelujah. Uh, hey, I got to get on here. Uh, praise God. So uh, Peter and John walked up to the church. Uh, hey, even going in to talk to God. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, and this lame man stretched out his hand uh, to get some money. Uh, and Peter looked on him uh, and said, silver and gold, have I none? Uh, but I got something better. Uh, I got something that money came by. Uh, come on and see. Uh, uh, he looked at the man uh, uh, and saw him lame. Uh, but he said, in the name of Jesus, uh, Christ of Nazareth, uh, uh, rise up uh, and walk. Uh, uh, 
and he say so reach down and grab the man the Bible said he leaped on his feet come on and say yeah never walked never walked but now he's leaping can the church show hallelujah come on and say hallelujah I don't care what your life has been you may have never been able to get ahead but in the name of Jesus the name that God gave us can change your life can change your course of history come on and say yeah all you gotta do is reach out by faith and say Lord I give you my life Lord I surrender all change me till my hands look new change me change my heart change my mind Jesus come on and say yeah that's why I love the name Jesus cause when you call on the name Jesus the devil has got to back up can I get a witness come on and say yeah when you call the name Jesus all the demons in hell begin to tremble they don't want you to call that name sometime when I'm praying I don't ask the Lord to do anything sometime I just get on my knees and say Jesus come on and say yeah Jesus 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 have you ever been down and burden the spirit get down to pray don't know what to say I know one word you can say Jesus 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 Lord Jesus something begins to happen down in your soul when you call that name bless that wonderful name of Jesus no other name I know clap in and say yeah come on and say yeah Donald Trump says he can save America Hillary and Bernie say they can save America but I know somebody that not only can save America he can save the whole wide world Jesus God himself come on and say yeah give your life oh lame woman give your life oh lame man God is calling us God is calling us God is calling us get baptized in the name of Jesus get the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus run on in the name of Jesus and one of these mornings won't be long Jesus I said Jesus Jesus is coming back Jesus Jesus say yeah The name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, name of the Lord, Proverbs 18 and 12, said the name of the Lord is a strong tower, righteous run into it, and they are safe. You don't need no psychiatrist, all you need is Jesus. You don't need no doctor. He is the doctor. You don't need this, that, or the other. It's all in Jesus. He's a doctor.
doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a judge on the fence. Yeah! Jesus is whatever you need. Whatever you need. Jesus is that. Can we say amen? That's all we preach around here is Jesus. Because if you ain't preaching Jesus, you ain't talking about nothing. He's the greatest person that ever existed in human history. That man, life was changed and the apostles were persecuted for it. God healed that man and the man didn't get healed at church and stopped going to church. He got healed and went into the church. You may say amen. That's what I'm trying to tell some of y'all folks recently say, you got to Continue in the church. Where God delivered you at, that's where you need to stay. He didn't deliver you at home. He didn't save you at home. He didn't save you at the cabin. Can we say amen? Because a whole lot of folks been to the cabin and went back out and did the same thing they were doing before. The cabin ain't the answer. Jesus is the answer. Can we say amen? Now these programs, these programs, they have their benefits. They have their benefits. And they do aid with people. But see, when I go get a pop, we used to buy big K pop. You remember that kind at Kroger's? Get a whole three liter for 59 cents. <laughs> big K. Cola, and all you tasting is the cola. Ain't no fears to it nowhere. You know what I'm talking about? Get some macaroni and cheese. What are we having today? Macaroni and cheese. Oh, all right, all right. You look over there, and there's the boxes over there with the macaroni. <laughs> we having potatoes today. Oh, all right, yeah, potatoes. And you look over there, and you see the box, potatoes that you mix with the milk. And the faster you stir it, the thicker it gets. Here's the potatoes. I mean, we was eating out. We was eating that. I don't know what happened. I think the Lord got in my wife that day, something. But Lord have mercy. She came home with a bag of potatoes. And she made those potatoes. And I looked over at the box in the cupboard. I threw the box out, missed the trash can. And <laughs> I said, I didn't know potatoes taste like this. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> People are living their lives like that. They're living their lives on boxed potatoes, drinking Big K when you can have the real thing. Can we say amen? If you're going to live this life, why not live it with the one that gave you the life that can direct you, that can help you? Can we say amen? Why not let him have control? Can we say amen? See, as you told my father was a pimp. I told you he pimped women. My grandmother was a prostitute. They ran a brothel. I told you this before. But I didn't want that life for me. So you don't have to be what, how you were raised. It don't matter what your environment is. Jesus is a, can twist your environment, turn it in right side up. I'm a witness of that. I go down to my brother. He got women in the bed, sleep, drunk. Folk coming in, buying drugs from me all the time. I took some of the saints over there. Someone was still talking about it. It was a couple months ago. They were still talking about it. Yeah, we went and saw the pastor's brother. I went over there one time. He had a woman in the bed sleep. I said, man, you got this woman in the bed? I said, what if I wanted to lay down and take a nap? He said, lay down? I said, man, I ain't laying down with that woman. She'd wake up. Hey, what are you doing here? Try to kiss on me. He started laughing. Woman stayed there asleep the whole time. <laughs> that's the difference between me and my brother. See, I gave my life to God early. 
See. Raised six kids. All six kids got saved. Active in the church. <laughs> I was a virgin when I got married. I ain't ashamed to say it. Some people look at it as a bad thing. It ain't no bad thing. We say amen. <laughs> God kept me. You see, before I got saved, the women weren't thinking about me. Then after I got saved, here they come. Oh, your teeth are so white. Your hair is so curly. Woo, look at your shoulders. I remember Diane Oliver said, boy, you just so fine. I said, you need to be saved. Some of y'all might be saying, I can't see that, Pastor. That was 100 years ago. <laughs> Folk don't care what you look like today. Can we say amen? You can have upside down lips and a sideway tongue. Folk think that you... Folk don't care about how you look today. You can have one arm. My brother had a, a child by a lame woman. <laughs> Some folk just don't care. Now, I'm not trying to speak against lame folk. Can we say amen? I'm not trying to speak against if somebody's lips look like they're upside down or whatever. I'm just making a point that lust is so strong today, it don't matter what a person looks like. <laughs> you don't believe me? Go to prison. I we working in the Department of Corrections. We went through the academy. And got our first check. And some of those sisters, when we walked into prison that Monday after getting our first check, oh, you saw the hairstyles and the makeup, and, uh, and the inmates were like, woo. May folk think that they looked like Halle Berry. But all the while, they was looking like Roseanne Barr. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. And they get the sashaying around there, and pretty soon they get themselves in trouble. I've seen it. 26 years, I've seen it. So as I close, because we need to close, the course of life that you are living now is not working. You know it's not working. Can we say amen? You know deep down within you don't have peace and joy. You don't have satisfaction on the inside. That's what Jesus so that's what we're preaching today. That's why we get so excited around here. Singing for the Lord. Can we say amen? We're happy for what God has done for us. Yeah. You can have that same joy. To be saved, you have to repent from all of your sins. You have to believe in the word of God. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, not Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You got to go down in the name. Can we say amen? <laughs> when our sister was delivered. We used the name. We weren't talking about Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Can we say amen? <laughs> we weren't even saying the power of Christ compel thee like the guy on the Catholic exorcist. We said the name. Didn't we say that? She's so shy. She even looks different. Come on, give the Lord a hand. God bless you. Yeah. The name. There's healing in that name. There's deliverance in that name. There's salvation. There's victory. There's joy. There's peace in that name. It's all in the name Jesus. God gave us that name. Neither is there salvation in no other. But there is none other name. God is so powerful, his name can save you. His name can wash your sins away. His name can fill you with his spirit. That's just how powerful God is. He don't have to come down here in his full power. He, can just, he just gave us the name. Let me say amen. The name Jesus. So today is your day. It's up to you. Are you going to leave the same way as you came? Or are you going to let Jesus do something for you? Are we making no excuses? Because there ain't no excuse. Can we say amen? Some things, there's just no excuse. There's just no excuse. 
If you fully repent and fully believe, once you're baptized in Jesus' name, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost.